For the month of September, the country was pounded by two typhoons, Typhoon Luis and Tropical Storm Mario. Last year, the province of Bohol was left devastated by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake, while the province of Leyte was battered by Typhoon Yolanda. These natural disasters damaged thousands of properties, such as houses and commercial buildings, left vehicles of all shapes and sizes floating on flooded streets or dangling on tree branches, not to mention the countless of lives lost because of them. Unfortunately, it is not a common practice for Filipinos to get insurance policies for themselves and their properties. Nor is it common practice to include in their policies protection from the devastation caused by natural disasters. These events that are outside of human control are termed as acts of nature. Acts of God is basically referring to what they call perils, no? situations that are considered catastrophic. So these would be things like earthquake, typhoon, uh, flood. There are different types of insurance policies that will cover things. Policies that cover their cars and policies that will cover their houses, no? their residences. For many Filipinos, getting an insurance policy is not one of their priorities. Since the Philippines is located directly within the ring of fire, most insurance brokers recommend that Filipinos get themselves insured as well as their properties, such as their houses and motor vehicles. At the end of the day, all it is is just a method, a way to handle the situation where you have losses. What happens if something goes wrong to your car, or your house, your company? Where will I get funds? Where will I get the money to rebuild, to buy another car, to buy another house? And that's where insurance is. But before we buy an insurance policy, we have to know, what should we look for in an insurance policy? What are acts of nature, and are these automatically included in most basic insurance policies? And should a natural disaster occur, how can the insured claim their benefits from insurance companies? Good evening. You are watching Legal Help Desk on 9TV. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. And I'm Attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, we will discuss your legal rights on insurance, specifically under the Acts of Nature coverage. What you need to know about the Acts of Nature coverage and what you need to do to claim your benefits from insurance companies. Our guests for tonight are Attorney Dennis Cabucos, Chief of the Regulation, Enforcement and Prosecution Division, and Attorney Joanne Castro, Media Relations Officer of the Insurance Commission. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening, yeah. evening Attorney Rod, Attorney Karen. Right, Attorney thank Joanne you. and Attorney Dennis, uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, in a way, appropriate tong topic natin mm -hmm. for tonight. Because just last, yeah? uh, mm -hmm. just last week, you, we had magkasunod yung Okay, Typhoon so Luis and then Tropical mm -hmm. Storm Mario, yeah. which brought a lot of damages again to a lot of properties. In mm -hmm. fact, kahit yung cousin ko was texting with me na meron siyang friend, nag-float away daw yung car sa Makati <laughs> and she was traumatized because she had uh -oh. uh, her young daughter inside the car uh -huh. and, and uh, talagang lumutang yung oh, kotse. So definitely, it's, it's uh, something that's uh, sort of like relevant now no, at these times. Now, before we start off, uh, you know, for me, personally, insurance, the concept of insurance is probably the best invention, one of the best inventions of, of man. No? Mm -hmm. But for some reason, Filipinos are allergic with mm -hmm. in insurance. So in maybe percentage we have to, yeah. up to now you yeah. insured in the Philippines? In the Philippines, uh, we have a data that 25% of the population are now covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. That is as of last year. That's still, very, still low, very low, right? yeah. compared yeah. to compared to a hundred million population. Yeah. In the so, what are the elements? What are the specific elements of uh, contract of insurance? Because for a lot of people, whenever they get insurance, it's normally a thick, normally finely printed paper. Mm -hmm. Na print mm -hmm. na print yes. na ng ano ng, and, ng car yeah, company. And generally, that, yeah. what uh, yeah. what would be mm -hmm. a contract of insurance? Mm -hmm. Because some people, pag sa cars. Uh, for, ito yung mga susceptible. We just yeah. saw the footage. Mm -hmm. Talagang susceptible siya sa mga bagyo, baha. And people always think na, no, may TPL yes. na ako. I already have mm -hmm. insurance yeah. for my car. So maybe you can clarify, mm -hmm. what really is a contract of insurance? Well, well elements, a, yeah. a, a contract of insurance, this is actually a written instrument or a uh, document containing the 
the uh, the agreement between the two parties, no? Okay. Uh, between the insurer and the insured, and uh, the insurer promised to indemnify the the insured for any loss mm. or any liability or any any damage to the property or asset of the you know, of the insured, no? Mm. And uh, uh, for guaranteeing or uh, assuming that risk, the insurer is entitled to the payment of premium. Premiums, okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, okay. The, the elements there is payment of a premium, yes. there is a risk, risk. Uh, and then a particular property or a particular, well, a subject matter subject. that would be sort of like uh, cover, covered by the insurance, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then indemnification. And so then, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so we already know basically what is a contract, yeah, but in terms of what we call what you're insuring against, Meaning some people insure against health, but now we're concentrating on natural calamities or what we call acts of God. Mm -hmm. What types of natural calamities or acts of God are normally insurable? Meaning we can really find insurance policies for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe Attorney Joanne mm -hmm. or Attorney Dennis? Yeah. Uh, these are no, uh, normally the, the, we call that perils, you know? Mm -hmm. Perils, yeah. Uh, normally, uh, uh, these are the typhoons, the flood, the earthquake, which may be uh, uh, earthquake that may cause fire or uh, tremor, mm -hmm. and uh, tornado, cyclone, mm -hmm. or anything that may cause significant damage to the property, mm -hmm. which are unexpected. In a way, they're not man-made. Yes. So some, sometimes they're called acts of God. Sometimes acts of nature. I don't know why mm -hmm. they call it acts of God. Parang it seems that God, God is, is God is punishing us. I think let's call it acts of nature. Well, baka, yes. baka but out, out of dito. curiosity, but, oh. if you see a clause in the insurance policy, because normally before you sign an, or buy insurance, you think that what types of coverage are here? Or I guess that's a tip for our viewers: check first, what types of coverage are are offered. But if you see just a general phrase that says acts of God or acts of nature, ano you automatic covered? Because what if the insurance uh, company says, okay, we're covering typhoons, flooding, pero hindi kasama ang earthquake. Is that, what are the maybe tips for people who are looking for insurance in terms of uh, looking for keywords na dapat nandun? Uh, normally, the, the, the policy uh, contains the specific peril. For example, mm. if it is typhoon, flood, uh, they will not mention the acts of God, but they will enumerate all those all those, that are all those events mm -mm. Okay, but that, they, that are being covered. Can it be a general statement like just covering acts of God? Pag, pag or is ba, it better to insist or, na? Yeah, oh. is it better to insist na, as Attorney uh, Karen mentioned, that na, naka-enumerate siya? Mm. Yes, uh, uh, <coughs> yes. It is, uh, it is a standard practice that insurance companies enumerate what certain mm. acts of God are covered. And just to add, the, the acts of God coverage can be either a standalone policy meaning there is a policy which is specifically intended to cover uh, acts of god such as an earthquake insurance a fire insurance so it's standalone normally so it's normally uh, acts it, of it god can, are not covered by the standard mm -mm. Uh, i guess property insurance it, uh. it is not normally covered by a mm. standard uh, insurance but it can be agreed upon by the parties and inserted as coverage through endorsement. Mm. So through for those who already so think they're insured, mm -hmm. it's better to check. Check your insurance policy because yes. it's not standard to have insurance against acts okay, of God. What, what do you mean by endorsement? Some of our televiewers may not understand. In, what do you mean by endorsement? What has to be done for it to be included? Okay, endorsement, these are additional provisions which can either uh, add uh, certain coverages mm -hmm. in your existing Pang rider. policy. Parang rider. Yes, yeah. correct. Okay. Okay. And and it is important that these endorsements or riders should have prior approval from the insurance commission as in a policy because mm. all insurance policy should be approved by the insurance commission. Okay. And for, for someone, if I'm buying insurance, is that approval, can I assume that the insurance company already, already received uh, the approval or mm. they're the ones who obtained the approval? Or is it something that I have to look for and, and ask from that insurance company selling to me? Uh, in order to be uh, in order to be protected, I think the the would be insured can check with the insurance commission if that policy is approved or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I, I want to ask then about acts of nature or, or, or as they say, acts of God. No? I said this this seems to be the uh, the, the focal point. No? I said usually it connotes 
things that you don't anticipate that will will happen and usually brought about by nature. But let's say, for example, lang it it, it, it your the list uh, in your policy indicates floods, but let's say it was because of a burst pipe. May nag-burst na pipe uh, ng, M- ng, ng MWSS or may Maynilad, for example. And nag-flood yung, ano mo, yung house mo. Yung, are those considered part of flooding under the definition of acts of God? Uh, yes. Na, uh, flooding can be caused by uh, typhoon or uh, hmm. uh, like, for example, the... the uh, utility flooding. Eh? Yes. Uh, increase of the, uh, the, the tide, for example. Mm. Um, as long as the land is located, the property is located in an area which is not normally inundated by water. Oh. Mm. So oh, the water okay. should come from without, ah, not okay. from, uh, okay. from And I guess, uh, mayroon ako mga questions na dalawa. One would be if, for instance, you already know that subject to prone to flooding yung area ninyo, and yet you left it parking there even if there was already an uh, early warning that may padating na bagyo. Or second, if you're insured against fire, pero kaya ka nasunog is because tinamaan ka ng kidlat. So those are things I want to ask you later, but uh, for now, we'll have to take a short break. Legal Help Desk will return, so stay tuned. Geographically, the Philippines is located where numerous natural disasters can occur such as typhoons, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and floods. These acts of nature have become a detriment to many Filipinos, losing homes, livelihood, modes of transportation, and to an extent, human lives. In the past, we used to uh, call this uh, uh, perilous acts of God. We changed it to acts of nature. The cost for uh, the standard policy is separate from the uh, cost of the acts of nature. Uh, it was only in uh, 2009 that we realized the importance of acts of nature as part of the perils that we have been sure against. After Ondoy, we saw ourselves uh, in a difficult shape principally because uh, we only knew uh, uh, the fire and lightning covers as the pertinent covers to buy for ourselves. And since Typhoon Ondoy, the onslaught brought about by natural disasters have increased, bringing more awareness for people to ensure their lives, homes, and motor vehicles. Should a natural disaster occur, what is the step-by-step process of claiming the benefits from insurance companies? You just call your insurer and report the loss. The insurer now validates your call and looks into his uh, records and uh, validates. After which, uh, it, it has two options. Either it, uh, on an in-house basis, adjusts the laws or refers this to a third party called adjusters. Huh? The adjusters go now to the uh, area affected by the laws and uh, determine the laws uh, within the specifications, within the parameters of the policy that was issued, and then values the laws for the insurer. When you have reported this incident of loss to your insurer, that should already trigger the insurer to do the rest. Until such time that there is coordination between the insurer and the insured and or the adjusters you know, for documentation to validate the loss and to determine the actual value of the loss. When both parties agree to that particular value, then the insurer is given by law to settle or to pay the loss as agreed upon within 30 days from the completion of all this documentation and from the completion of that agreement between the two parties. And like any transaction that involves money, there are certain requirements needed when filing your claims for your insurance benefit. Kung building ang apektado, siyempre, we go through a process of finding out what is the damage to the building. 
ano ba ang pangangailangan natin dito from the insured? Definitely, uh, meron ba kayong original building plans yan? And then, meron ba kayong costing yan? Uh, magkano ba pinilid yung house na yan? Bago mangyari itong sakuna, etc. Uh, all that the motor vehicle owner uh, has to submit uh, would be the um, documents that will assert an ownership, CR or R. No? And two, uh, maybe together with the insurer, comes up with his own valuation of the loss para mapabilis. With the rise of natural disasters pummeling the country, it is always best to be protected from these. Work with a trusted insurance company and make sure to pay your monthly premiums to avoid any arrears to ensure the protection of your properties should the need arise. And my advice is for those who have uh, uh, these types of assets, get insurance for yourselves. It's important for insureds or for prospects or for owners of properties, both uh, fixed assets and motor vehicles, to insure against acts of nature. You're still watching Legal Help Desk on 9TV with our guests, Attorney Dennis Cabucos and Attorney Joanne Castro. Right. So, kanina before the commercial break, we were talking about cars, for instance, wherein it's insured against flooding. And then, kunwari, uh, alam mo ng flood-prone area and meron ng forecast na babagyo and yet you still parked in that same flood-prone area. Can the insurance company deny insurance coverage in that case? So generally, if your car is covered by an Acts of Nature clause, it, is, it would be normal that the insurance company would pay you or indemnify you against your loss. However, the insurance company can also deny your claim because there are certain provisions on the policy that you should uh, adopt a risk reduction measure. So there, there are additional... Con the insurance company can insert additional conditions for your acts of nature coverage, such as you should uh, you should employ a risk reduction measure. No. Okay, so okay. the mm. and, ano, you have to really be careful mm. when mm. you're reading yeah. your insurance policy, yes. meaning am I also prepared to be vigilant in terms of looking after my property na in insure? Yes, that is correct. Because mm. although uh, it is common that uh, insure it is a common that uh, Insurance, po insurance contracts are contracts of adhesion. Uh, it is also prudent on the part of the would-be insured to read the to read policy. Yes. What about that case, uh, Attorney Dennis, uh -huh. na if you're covered by an insurance against fire, uh -huh. pero ang naging cost ng fire would be, for instance, lightning. Uh, lightning. So that's mm -hmm. an act of nature. But kanina we were discussing that you sometimes need extra coverage in order to be covered by acts of nature. Would the insured have a claim in that case? Uh, yes, uh, in, in a normal fire policy, lightning is included as one of the, the costs. Uh -huh. no? Yes, mm -hmm. if if the damage is caused by lightning, the, the claim is payable. But of course, if let's say it's, it was brought about by carelessness of the owner, for example, again, then the the the, right, the provisions you were saying earlier about risk reduction uh, measures. measures Will will uh, take place, right? Will 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 apply. Now, I guess uh, one of the things that bother people, and there's a reason why only 25% are covered. I think generally the population, uh, they feel that insurance contracts are too complex and complicated. Will you agree with me? Because as you mentioned earlier, they're contracts of adhesion, meaning normally na draft na siya, the provisions are drafted by the by the one that wants you to be insured, mm. and you just normally sign. sign. Now, can can people, uh, for example, who, who seek this uh, uh, insurance coverage, can they have a say? Let's say, I don't want this provision, art, or this article number 8, I don't like this provision number 10, hmm. and can there be, can, can they can have a negotiate? say? Can, yeah. can, can you, you negotiate, negotiate for other types of yeah. coverage? Uh, yes, uh, insurance is a contract between two parties, you know? mm -hmm. and uh, people, I think, uh, the, the, the thing that they cannot change the, the, the policy. Yes. Oh. But uh, in reality, they can question, they can, they can ask the insurance company to delete some of these provisions or can change that. Even if it is mm -hmm. a standard policy, it can oh. still be changed and it can be done through endorsement. So, you can the insurance company, no, this is standard, take it or leave it. Can they can say that, no, but uh, if the account can. is big, for example, they need, for example, that account. Ah, okay. They will, uh, I know, they, they will. Okay. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. easier to okay. if you're uh, agree with a that. Bigger, sure. yes. uh, oh. 
company. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Now we have uh, some questions from our viewers. Uh, Bonnie mm. is asking, what should I consider before getting insurance? How will I know if the insurance company I will get insurance from can be trusted? Yeah. So it, it, I guess two, two things. So one, what, what do I look for in insurance contract mm. or insurance policy? The second one is parang, how, can, how does he know? Uh, if that insurance company can be trusted, can they show, go to a website of the insurance commission and determine which are the accredited insurance companies? No. Okay, so before getting an insurance, uh, before getting an insurance policy, of course, it is important for the would-be insured to determine what type of insurance does he or she needs, mm. and of course, we have to determine how much of our money are we willing to put mm -hmm. or invest to an insurance contract. Okay. Because there are some problems wherein uh, they would be attracted by certain insurance policy, but then it is not within one's budget, so mm -hmm. they would not be able to pay the premium on time, mm -hmm. and this gives the insurer the right to cancel because of non-payment of premium. Mm -hmm. So in getting an insurance, you have to determine if that is one of your priorities and if it is within your budget mm -hmm. okay. so that you would be able to pay it as the premium becomes due. Mm -hmm. And to answer the second question, as to how would they know if the insurance company can be trusted. Uh, all insurance companies in the Philippines are regulated and supervised by the Insurance Commission. They are registered with the Insurance Commission and they can always check our website to know if that insurance company is registered with the Insurance okay, that's Commission. That's a very helpful tip. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can check on the website if yes. an insurance company is registered. Okay, we have another question from Leonard. My car was washed away by the flooding caused by the last typhoon. I don't know if it's Luis or Mario. And I, know, I don't know where it is anymore. Can I still be covered by my insurance policy? Okay. So, uh, kailangan mo bang uh, pinpoint kung nasaan at mapakita sa insurance company? Proof of loss. I get proof of, yeah. You have to prove that... Uh, it that is it one of the loss. processes no, yeah. that they have to mm. uh, estimate the loss. And so, what does Leonard have to do here? Well, uh, in the contract of insurance, there must be a specific property that you own. Mm -hmm. uh, you must identify the covered property. So if there is no more property, there's nothing to insure. Mm -hmm. okay. Ah, nothing to insure. But in this case, insured na yung car, insured nabayaran car. niya na yung insurance. But uh, because of the typhoon, nawala. nawala na yung car. He cannot pinpoint no, no wash away. So no wash away. how can he claim? Can he just file his claim for the total value of mm. the car? Affidavit of loss, oh. na parang, oh, I can't find my car oh. anymore. Oh. Is there... Uh, uh, yes, yes uh, he should inform immediately the insurance company regarding the, uh, the loss of the vehicle so that the insurance company can make, the, uh, can make some investigation mm. and mm. Uh, can also provide the list of documents that he should comply. Mm -mm. So, hindi naman. so Leonard can still claim from his insurance company in spite of the fact that he's not going to see the car because he's going to Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, we have a caller on the line. Uh, his name is Rom of Kainta. Rom, good evening. Okay. okay. We'll try to get we'll try, Rom we'll try, back. Oh, okay, we'll let's try to get Rom. answer some questions Muna from uh -huh. those who posted yeah. in our Twitter and Facebook page. Okay. There's one from Claire. Typically, how much will be charged or added to my policy if I add the acts of nature coverage. So, ito yung kaninang binanggit nyo, yeah. Attorney Joanne, na hindi automatic ang acts of nature na coverage. So, mm -hmm. magkano normally, how much more cost does it add? So, for motor vehicles, uh, the minimum that insurance company can impose for the additional coverage of acts of nature is 0.5% of the property. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for a, a 1 million peso car, it's 0.5%. That's only around 5,000 5, 5, pesos. pesos. So, so minimum, minimum yun. Minimum 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 yun. But they can charge higher. Mm -mm. They can charge higher because uh, it would depend on whether your area is a flood-prone area. So mm. they so can the always... can go higher. Yes. So if it can happen uh, if you live, for instance, in Marikina, which we all know is more flood-prone than, for instance... Um, Mahati. Mahati. Certain parts of Mahati. Then it can happen na mas mahal yung babayaran mo if you're from Rikina. Yes. Okay. okay, the risk is higher. Mm -hmm. All right. So for now, we'll have to take another short break. Legal Help Desk will return after these messages.
You're still tuned in to Legal Help Desk on 9TV. And we have a caller on the line, uh, Rom of Kainta. Good evening, Rom. Yeah, good evening, Attorney Karen and uh, Attorney Rod. Yes, good evening. Uh, yeah, I would like to generalize my question. You know, um, on the notion that um, mahirap mahollekta raw sa insurance companies when the time comes. No? Um, my question is this. Can the commission, insurance commission, regulate the policies of um, all insurance companies because um, when you sign the, 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 the contract, by the time that something would happen, uh, some certain things would, would come out. Ang hirap ng, uh, to haggle with them and then you, you end up getting less with what is supposed uh, you, you paid for on your premium. So, uh, like an example is the uh, building insurance where I used to be a director of this particular condominium. Not all directors read entirely the policies. When I came to read it, read it, and daming ano, so many restrictions, uh, as you call it, as risk reduction. So, can the insurance commission generalize this in favorable to the uh, clients, to the people of the republic? No, because um, it seems to be um, unfair. But uh, by, when the time comes that you need to claim, uh, it's so small already. So, can the the insurance company, uh, insurance commission, do something about it? That's a good okay. question, yeah. Yeah, Attorney Dennis, maybe you mm -hmm. want to give that a shot? Uh, yes, uh, it's important to read the policy provisions, no? like for example, the deductions as well as the exclusions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it doesn't mean that you are covered by certain peril, the, uh, 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 the insurance company will have to pay you. Uh, uh, no. There are some general conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the question of Rom then is uh, if... For instance, sure. the insurance commission can do something to help them out because katulad nga na sinabi niyo kanina mm. na it is kind of a take it or leave it type of contract mm. kasi if I were to negotiate and say this is my insurance coverage for the car pero ayoko na na sa akin pa yung responsibility na I have to make sure ma-move ko yung kotse pag merong forecast because obviously sobra kong busy sa office mo ganung types and you said earlier yes you can negotiate pero it it's also up to the insurance company kung sabihin nila na uh, we don't accept your terms and it, kung ayaw mo magpa-insure, di wag. Uh, so, I, I guess Rom's question, tama ba Rom, na how can the insurance commission intervene to help yung mga insured like them? Yes, attorney. Okay. That's right. We have actually one division uh, entertaining the, uh, the complainants. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call the insurance commission. We have the public assistance. Yep, and you have a hotline. You have a yes, hotline. a whole division to to uh, entertain the claimants, and then uh, we ask the insurance companies to uh, to come to the office and explain to the claimants mm -hmm. why is it that the claim is being denied like that. Mm -hmm. and so, In this case, kung wala pa silang claims, but upon uh, getting a proposed insurance contract, they find the terms to be either unfavorable or too one-sided. Can they still report that to the insurance commission to ask for help in negotiating for a better contract? Actually, they can change the contract. They can, uh, if that is a director's liability insurance, so most likely the corporation is the, the policy holder. Mm. So it, it could be a big account that they can, they can tell the insurance company, we want this exclusion to be deleted from the policy because mm. it will not serve us. Mm -hmm. So can, in other words, the insurance commission, if I, if I may, the, uh, just take off from the question of Rome, can intervene and somehow mediate in order to, for them to be able to get more, uh, I guess, because uh, I think Rome was, was asking, sometimes the claim is so late at the end of the day. Is that right, Rome? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so is there a way that, is there a mediation or... Let's say maybe arbitration, for lack of a better term, uh, division on the part mm -hmm. of the insurance commission where it helps those who are claiming uh, to make it easier mm -hmm. and not like Because sometimes it doesn't make sense. Mag hire mm -hmm. ka pa ng lawyer, eh, yung claim oh. mo naman hindi ganun ka mahal. Oh. So yeah. it's really a weird decision to make na, should I still go mm -hmm. after the claim? Mm -hmm. In which case, mm -hmm. We need a lawyer, but then mas gastos pa. So, uh, what would be your advice yeah, to yeah. people like yes, Rome? Yes, they can go to the insurance commission, and we have one division doing that with several people. Wait, which division is this? Uh, public assistance and mediation division. Mm, okay, so uh, I was formally assigned to that, and uh, what we are, uh, what we were doing during the time, uh, we called the insurance company to explain. Mm. And uh, many of the cases uh, did not reach the court because of the settlement between the parties. I see. Okay, there you have it, Rom, no? So <laughs> they have a public assistance office, yes. division. 
can I say something? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. I, I would rather suggest that um, maybe the insurance commission can lay down uh, a set, certain gen, uh, general policies uh, um, to be the the, the, the guideline, uh, and then any any um, deviation in the future or any problem that would come out uh, can just be uh, uh, argued between the insurance commission and that of and the client and that of the uh, insurance company. It would less be less tedious rather than no guideline at all, and then uh, you just haggle it out and talk it out with the insurance commission while, uh, you know, the, the problem, in order that the problem be solved. Mm -hmm. So my, my last, uh, my, my, the last thing that I would say is maybe the insurance commission can, can make one, um, can make a general guideline. Then mm -hmm. later na lang, uh, deviations that would happen. Yeah, that's a, well, that's a good suggestion, yeah, I guess. So uh, maybe you can take this up with, yes. uh, mm -mm, with, with the your commissioner. policy division. All right. Thank you, Rom. We should probably be guest si Rom here, right? Thank you so much, Rom. That's, uh, that's so a good much, input. Thank you so much, Rom. Those are very good inputs. Right. Thank you. All right, we still have some uh, questions from our viewers uh, from Randall. We, we bought a car six months ago with an insurance policy including Acts of God. When the last uh, flooding happened, we were confident that we were covered. That's why we, we brought it to the CASA. The CASA called us and told us that the insurance company will not allow them to repair the car, claiming that we are not covered for acts of God. So we called the salesman and he said that the endorsement for our policy was not sent on time and therefore our claim is not valid. I'm assuming that's the endorsement for the act of God uh, clause. No? What is our best option to settle this? So his understanding yeah. is covered sila. The salesman said that yes, uh, you're covered sa acts of God. Yeah. Pala, the salesman, Mukhang na negligence came from the insurance company mm -hmm. because oh, they were not able to forward salesman. it all. Or one yeah. of them, mm -hmm. not able to forward it on time before the flooding occurred. So what would be the best remedy in this case? Well, uh, I think the issue there is the, the coverage. Okay. Whether uh, there is an endorsement for the acts of God. Mm. So if there is an endorsement, for example, issued by the insurance company, it's the insurance company that issues the endorsement. Mm. So if it was received by the salesman, then uh, supposed to be, uh, there is a coverage ready for the acts of God. In this case, I think the salesman claimed that by, by coverage, na, but did, that did not mm. act Kung on the relationship with salesman because mm. he's the with the dealer or, or retailer na nagbenta nung car mm. and then the insurance is another company can he go after the salesman or that uh, retailer for the car mm. instead of the because the insurance of course will say of action, we're not a party there's no contract yet mm. kasi hindi naman umabot sa amin yung endorsement uh, yes if there is misrepresentation on the part of the salesman mm. uh, he can be disciplined as uh, an intermediary mm. so it's either that we suspend the license or cancel the license mm. Mm. okay, okay. So, so it is this also a case that he can bring up for mediation with the insurance company uh, yes mm. okay okay so right. later we'll repeat the number no? because mm. it seems that the insurance commission can help settle cases mm -hmm. without going to court. Okay. Our next question is from Troy. We insured our house and our car and included the Acts of God coverage, both soaked in flood water for two days. When we called the insurance company, they told us that they couldn't find our policy and therefore we can't be covered. Is this even possible? What can be the solution of our problem? Yeah, missing policy. Is that, uh, mm. is is that, that a defense? Excuse? Uh, uh, a defense a of the part of them? Uh, Perhaps Attorney John uh, will give it a shot? A missing policy is not a defense for an insurance company to deny a claim. Mm. Because normally, they would have a copy of that insurance policy. So my advice would be if your insurance policy was, uh, is missing or was stolen, you can either execute an affidavit of loss attesting to the fact that your insurance policy uh, was lost, including the documents required in order for the insurance company to process your claims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Now, our last question is from... Last na? Wow. Our last question is from Albert. Uh, Bilis, no? Uh, we have a family house in Albay and within the danger zone oh, of Mount Mayon, and we are afraid that the volcano would erupt anytime soon. If so, how can we file for our benefits? What if, uh, what if the documents required were damaged by fires or other forms of destruction caused by the volcanic eruption? It's kind of related to mm -hmm. what we talked mm -hmm. about earlier, no? Um, 
I, uh, I guess that's a problem that they're they're having no? what if, uh, what for the requirements for the uh, for fire policy no mm -hmm. uh, I think they have to present the the uh, the pictures for mm -hmm. example if they have the pictures of the, the damaged property yeah. then uh, they have also the as much as possible an estimate of the cost of repair Mm -hmm. So that the company can can take yeah. into consideration. So if they lost a TCT, they can go to the register of deeds. So yes, might have a copy of the title, right? Oh, uh, yeah. and also the floor plan or the build, building plan, so that the insurance company can can estimate how much does it cost, mm -hmm. okay. or how much is the cost of the. Uh, and lastly, seguro before we end this with uh, our last after our last question, uh, would you say that it's really expensive to be insured? Because I think. One of the reasons why there's very little insurance coverage in the Philippines is that a lot of people perceive this to be an added cost. Na sayang sa gastos, dagdag gastos lang yan. Is it really expensive to get insurance coverage? Uh, for if your property is of uh, of a bigger amount, of course the insurance premiums would be higher because uh, the premiums are based on the value of the property as well as the risk covered by your insurance policy. But uh, as I have said earlier, 25% of Filipinos are now covered by mm -mm. insurance. Uh, compared to the numbers back in 2009 where we only have 14%. Mm -hmm. And we attribute the growth in the number of persons covered by insurance because of micro-insurance. Mm -hmm. So micro-insurance is a new introduction wherein it is tailored fit for the needs of low-income earners. Okay. So, uh, uh, the public can avail of uh, micro-insurance products because, uh, as I've said, it is tailored fit for low-income earners because there is a cap for the premium. There is a limit. Like, how, what, you, what uh, is the cap? Yes, the limit for insurance premium calculated or computed daily, it must not exceed 7.5% of the minimum wage of non-agricultural workers in Metro Manila. So that is 7.5% of, of the 400, uh, 466, mm -hmm. which okay. is our minimum wage. And the, insure, uh, the benefit that they can get, w the maximum would be not more than 1,000 of the salary of mini of salary of non-agricultural workers in Metro Manila. So, so in, in short, yeah. siguro around 38 pesos would be yes. the average um, yes. insurance. 34, 34 premium. to 38 uh, and, premium and, and per day. And it covers them for what? It, covers uh, for it what? would depend because micro-insurance, they have products for life insurance and non-life insurance. And they can get this from all the accredited uh, insurance yeah. companies? Yes, we have a list of insurance companies who offer micro-insurance products. Mm -hmm. And these products are are approved by the insurance commission. Mm -hmm. Actually, we didn't go much into other types of insurance. We, mm -hmm. we concentrated on property mm -hmm. insurance. But in fact, when you're talking about acts of God, uh, I know it's a bad, uh, it's not a very uh, happy topic to talk mm -hmm. about, but it can really cause loss of lives as well. So yeah. it makes sense to also look into getting life insurance coverage yeah. you know, for your loved ones. Yeah, my suggestion is mm -hmm. that maybe in another uh, episode, we covered on life insurance. Mm -hmm. Because that's another topic altogether. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh. Uh. But thank you so much. That was very yeah. informative. Thank you, Attorney Dennis mm -hmm. Kabukos, Chief Regulation Enforcement and Prosecution Division of the Insurance Commission, and Attorney Joan Castro, Media Relations Officer of the Insurance Commission. Thank you thank again. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Legal Help This will be back, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Legal Help Desk on 9TV. And today we had a very relevant topic yeah. considering recent, just last week, magkasunod na yung mga bagyo and ang dami na namang nasirang properties. And you get a lot of these messages that how can I claim? How can I claim? Diba? So, yes. uh, it, it's certainly a, a timely topic and uh, I think it's uh, very important for our televiewers to know. No? Na parang hindi automatic yung acts of nature mm -hmm. clause in, in yes. insurance, uh, in your insurance policies. Yes. So when you get insurance, make sure that you read it carefully and tignan nyo yung tinatawag nating mga coverage, meaning kung ano ba yung mga insured against kayo because 
uh, just because you have property insurance, meaning you insured your house or your car against damages, it's not automatic that mm -hmm. acts of God or acts of nature, meaning yung mga damages caused by typhoon, by lightning, by earthquake, are covered. So you have to make sure that it's really there. Mm -hmm. And if it's not there, it might make sense to add that as one of your insurance coverage. And you can do that by what you call an endorsement in the policy, meaning you have your existing policy and idadig daglang yung insurance coverage na yun. Oh, endorsement, no? Mm -mm. Now, it's very important uh, to, um, to bear in mind, no, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, although most insurance contracts, in fact, practically all, are, are, are pre-drafted by the insurance company. And normally, they just give you a form. It's already standardized. The, 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 the idea is it's still a contract and therefore you have a say. So if you are the one seeking coverage, you don't necessarily have to just accept what is given to you. You can review the contract and review every provision. And if you have a question on the provision, you can actually tell the insurance company, I have an issue with this, uh, with this particular provision. So. Uh, Although it is a contract of adhesion, and uh, as, uh, as we lawyers are familiar with that, no, it basically means that it's a pre-drafted contract. And the usual tendency is for the one who's receiving it uh, will just accept it. Uh, the, the good news is, should there be a gray area uh, with, that, with that contract, it's always the, the court, or in this case the insurance commission, will always construe it in, f in favor of the one who just accepted it, mm -hmm. right? so against against it's more for the insured rather than the the insurance company. So, but uh, I think it's important to to stress you know, that you do have a say. It doesn't necessarily mean that just because they give you the contract, you have to accept it just like that. You uh -huh. you can suggest provisions. And in relation to that, if you are having a hard time negotiating with your insurance company, meaning they're being very unreasonable, for instance, you can approach the insurance commission, and they have mediators for this or they can intervene on your behalf to help you uh, one also deal with the insurance company especially if they're being unfair or unreasonable and the insurance commission also hears complaints about insurance companies and what they can do is actually uh, penalize the insurance company if they're engaged in for instance unfair practices and also if you have a claim and you're finding it difficult to claim from your insurance company, maybe because they're also uh, being unreasonable or means and hindi tama yung grounds nila for denying it. Yes. Like for instance, yung kanina may viewer na nagtanong, pag kanawa, the, the insurance company was claiming that they lost the insurance policy. These things, you don't even have to go to court. Go to the insurance commission first. Mm. So that one, it's faster and second, it will cost you less. So mm. we were flashing kanina the number of the insurance uh, commission. commission and also Never. if you want to check in the first place if you're dealing with a legitimate insurance company the website of the insurance commission is a helpful tool for you because you can go online and check if they are registered with the insurance commission because it's a requirement an insurance company has mm -hmm. to be registered in order to legally do insurance business in the Philippines. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. it's quite important. No? Remember, insurance is not just for the rich. Uh, it's very important to be insured. And uh, always remember that just because if you, you, know, you lose your policy, it doesn't mean that you, can, you can't collect. Mm -hmm. all right? And before we move on, mind. lastly, lang pala, mm -hmm. for those who think that the insurance is also for just an added gastos and in, in practical, uh, Attorney Joanne from the Insurance Commission mentioned earlier, now there is what you call micro insurance, meaning it's really for low income earners, so you don't have to worry about expensive insurance. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so make sure you study more about insurance and we ensure you that uh, it will be worth your while. <laughs> Endorse. <laughs> assure ha? you. All right. Over the okay. week, we have received some questions and comments from our viewers on topics we have previously discussed. Our, our first recap question is from Hilda or Gilda What legal action can be filed if the tenant committed jumper on my? electricity meter okay, okay. so Gilda, yeah. that, that's actually yeah. what you call theft so that's pag theft. Oh. so that mm -hmm. is what you can file it's a criminal case and mm -hmm. you can go to uh, a public prosecutor or what you call a fiscal mm -hmm. and file a criminal complaint for theft mm -hmm. and then uh, madali lang naman yan. at that stage you don't need a lawyer you can just go there uh, dun sa area ninyo where kasi it's where the offense was yeah. committed so meaning if you're for instance living in Quezon City 
then you go to the fiscal or public prosecutor's office in Quezon yeah. City and file that criminal complaint. Take pictures. For theft. Take, take pictures of the jumper. Para mm -hmm. obviously, when you file filing a criminal case, you need evidence, no? So yeah, take pictures of the jumper, and uh, of course, you'll have to make uh, statements. No, they have to make sure that you're not the one who put the jumper there, all right? <laughs> the tenor. Set up. All right. okay. 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 Our next question is from John. Are dorms covered by the rent control law? What if the dorms don't have permits? Ayan, okay. Well, uh, dorms are covered, I think, bed spacing, as long as it falls under the rent control law and the rent control law requires. But if it's Metro Manila uh, location okay, mm -hmm. or, or apartment, then it has to be less than 10,000 pesos monthly rent. No? If it's outside Metro Manila, it's 5,000 pesos. So as long as it falls under that, th that category and, and it's really made uh, it's for residential purposes, then it falls under the rent control law. And um, so, that yeah, dorms even are dorms covered. are yeah. covered. And mm -hmm. yung lack of a permit, for instance, that's not an excuse for the dorm not to be covered by the rent per, rent uh, control law. So, mm -hmm. the one thing that uh, that dorm would be subject to is additional fines and penalties for operating a business without a permit. Yeah. So both, yeah. Baka B I R Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, now we'll uh, we're going to the comment section. So Nak sent us this uh, question on our Facebook page. Oh, it's a question. I just want uh, to know if I have to register the contract that I signed with the landlord. I only have a notarized contract and would want to know if this is legal. Also, how can you tell if an apartment building has the license to operate? Mm -hmm. Well, if it's notarized, yeah. I don't well, know what um, he means by one, if it's uh, a lease contract, one, if it's covered by the rent control law, meaning if it's within uh, Metro Manila, it does not exceed 10,000. Pesos, and then if it's outside of Metro Manila, does not exceed 5,000 pesos. Uh, under the rent control law, you don't even need a signed lease agreement. Mm -hmm. So, but in in case hindi kayo covered on rent control law, then uh, the lease would have to be in writing and notarized. So you already have that, and hindi naman kailangan registered. Again, ang benefit kasi ng registration, meaning na nakaanotate to dun sa title at nakaregister sa register of deeds, is that Pag nabenta yung property, the buyer, for instance, the new buyer, would have to respect the lease na naka-annotate mm -hmm. doon sa certificate of title. So, so hindi, yun, hindi naman kailangan yan na registered in order for that lease contract to be valid between you and your landlord. Mm -hmm. Parang notice lang yun to the buyer. Mm -hmm. the protection, buyer. Protection, added protection. Added protection for the mm -hmm. tenant. So, so, but not required for it to oh, be and valid. And then, to see pala kung meron silang license to operate, uh, that's one thing that you can check with your city hall. Kasi doon naman kumukuha ng mga business permits, for instance. So, yung apartment. And then, another place that you can check is the HLURB if uh, yung developer of that apartment building is registered with them. Alright. Mm -mm. Okay. And um, Alan wrote us this comment. Ito mm -hmm. hindi na question. It's a comment. Mm -hmm. Watching your show is a great help not only to a layman but likewise to a law graduate like me thereby refreshing the legal knowledge taught in law school. I wish that your show will continue to enlighten everyone's minds since we are all surrounded with laws in order to attain tranquility and be a safer world to live in by letting your viewers realize that no one is above the law and that everyone is accountable to the consequences of their actions which must always be within the bounds of the law. More power, compañeros. Uh, Alam, power spoken like a lawyer talaga. Yeah. Mahaba, cannot resist. Very no, wordy. Lawyers, <laughs> yeah, Thank I, you, Alan. That I was too, well written. When, when I want tranquility, I, I read law books. Wag lang mga scrasa, sakit ulo mo. And no, lastly, from you. Edwin, I really enjoy uh, watching your show. As a policeman, I learned so many laws and legal advice which uh, help a lot in my daily work. I also want to be a lawyer. Good for you. I want to be a lawyer someday since I am a certified criminologist and at the same time a civil engineer. Wow, ang talino ni Edwin. Wow, very smart. Thank you, Edwin. And I'm Good sure luck. you'll be yeah. a great lawyer. Yes. Tama-tama, criminologist, engineer, wala, bali wala na siguro yung law. Kain kain niya na yan. Kain kain niya. All right, that's all the time that we have for tonight. We'd like to thank our viewers for sending in uh, your questions via our social media pages. I'm attorney Rod Tepomusano. And I'm attorney Karen Jimeno. If you have any questions on our topic for tonight, post these on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. Good night.